What a privilege that God has given to me to share his word to you uh, through uh, my TV. First of all, I would like to say thank you to the almighty God for such a privilege. It is not something that I've worked for, but God himself is the one who has ordained it to be so. I also would like to say thank you to the CEO of my TV who has given this also privilege uh, to be here with you this wonderful morning. It is a blessing. I also want to thank uh, Pastor Atu and his team for such an invitation. I thank God for his life, and I thank God for what God is using him and his wife and his team doing in Fiji. I'm so glad to be connected to him, and I'm so glad that God has brought me this far. And I thank God for the life of my bishop, Bishop Doug Heward Mills, the founder of the United Denomination of Lighthouse Chapel family, who has nurtured me, who has trained me, who has brought me this far. I could have been standing here in front of you, sharing the word of God with you without his input in my life. I always say that I'm a life testimony. I have not been to Bible school, but through his mentorship and through following him, today God has taken me to places. God has used me to do his great works around the world. And I believe that today, just this few minutes that I'm going to be here with you, uh, it's going to be a blessing and God is going to use me as a vessel, as a channel to touch you, to just share a word of God with you. I always give my congregation this one advice that anytime you come to church, maybe you are the whole message is not for you, but there is one word that God has for you that day. And I believe that there is somebody out there who is listening to me right now. God has a word, one word. That is going to change you, is going to bring a U-turn in your life, in your ministry, in every business that you are endeavored to do or you are engaged in. And I believe that as you are out there, I pray that the Holy Spirit will open your heart. The Holy Spirit will touch you. The Holy Spirit will come upon you mightily so that you will not miss your blessing this wonderful morning. Shall we have prayer or shall we share a word of prayer this wonderful morning? Father, in the name of Jesus, we want to give glory to you. We want to give you the praise and the honor and all the adoration, Lord. Father, there is nothing that we are doing that you did not, oh God, give us the grace. There is nothing that we have that you did not give it to us. I'm standing here this wonderful morning in the presence of your precious people of Fiji Islands, oh God. Sharing your word, what a blessing, what a privilege that, Lord, you have bestowed upon me. I pray that, Father, you will use my members this morning, my tongue, Lord, my hand, my eyes, everything that I have. Use it to bless your people. Use it to touch your people. Use it to deliver a great message to your people. And I pray that by the time, Lord, I will leave this place, somebody out there, life will never be the same again. I give you all the glory and all the honor. In Jesus' name, amen. Viewers. We are blessed once again, and I thank God for this wonderful message that the Lord has put upon my heart to share with you in this morning devotion. And uh, I believe that in life, people want to succeed. People want to do well. People want to grow. People want to increase. As a matter of fact, when you ask every child when he's growing up, what do you want to become? So I want to become a doctor. I want to become a lawyer. I want to become this. And in fact, in everybody's heart, people are aspiring to become great in this life. Many pastors want to become great. Businessmen, every field, when you ask people, their aim is to become great. But sometimes you realize that the line that we are on it is not leading us to greatness or it is not leading us to increase. And I believe that this morning, that is the word that God has put upon my heart in this morning devotion to share this one key to greatness or one key to increase with you. And I believe that viewers, as we enter into the word of God, which is the ultimate, you will be blessed, you will be touched, and your life will never be the same again. So I want to just read from the Bible uh, in the beginnings, Genesis chapter 30 and verse 27. And we want to look at a man who from nowhere became successful. And his success 
became a contagious. It's like it, it affected somebody that he came in contact with. And that is what this morning the Lord wants me to share with you. And I believe that somebody is out there and you are hearing me right now. And you have been aspiring to become great. You have been aspiring to become uh, rich. You have, been, you have been desiring to, to, to increase in the field that you are in. This morning, I believe that God brought me here for you. So hear this message well, and your life will be blessed. Genesis chapter 30, verse 27. Now, just to give you an overview of this chapter, uh, the Bible says that there was these two twins that Isaac gave birth. One's name was Esau, and then one's name was Jacob. Now, these two twins, when they were in the womb, the younger one has been pursuing after, after the elderly one. That even when they were coming out, the Bible said that he was holding on to his heel. And now when they came out, the Bible says that the father was connected to the elderly one. Is, which is which is which was which, which was the, the custom. Now the father is always connected to the elderly one because when he dies, his inheritance goes to the elderly one. Now the Bible says that the younger one, which is Jacob, was also connected to the mother. Now one day the father was about to check out and he wanted to bless his son and give the inheritance or do a transfer. And the Bible says that Isaac called his son Esau and he said that look. I am about to go now. I want to leave you the blessing. But before I pronounce a blessing, I want you to go out there, find me the best meat, and come and do my normal meal that I enjoy. And after I have eaten and I am full, then I will release a blessing. Uh, I wouldn't want to even go into this because uh, in the olden days, when your father is about to die or whatever, you don't ask for money, you don't ask for car, you don't ask for house, you ask for a blessing. So in the olden days, the fathers blessed their children and the blessing passed on from generation to generation. So these two guys, what they were looking for from their father was not money, not car, not house. They were looking for a blessing. Now, Esau went out there to hunt for, the, uh, for whatever, to come and prepare the meal. But the Bible says that the mother told Jacob that don't worry. I know what your father likes, and I am going to prepare what your father likes, and I'm going to help you to claim this blessing. Now, just to cut short, the story short, the Bible says that all this thing came to pass. Jacob received the blessing. Now, when his brother came from the field, and then when he took his meal to the father, the father said, that, I have already eaten, and the blessing that I was going to give it to you, the inheritance that I have for you, your brother has come for it. Your brother has overtaken you, and he has taken your blessing. I'm sorry, there is nothing for you. And the son cried, and he pushes the father. So the father has to now pronounce something on him. Now, hatred came in, and the Bible says that uh, Esau was now wanting to kill his brother. And the mother called Jacob, and he said, Look, the way your brother is furious, you got to leave this place and go to my brother's place and stay, dwell with my brother. Stay there for some time. So your brother's anger goes down. Then I will bring you back. So when Jacob was running away from his brother, he got to a place. And then the Bible said that he was tired. He took a stone, he slept, and there he had an encounter with God. He got to his uncle, all right. He worked for his uncle. He did all that he could do. And then one day, this gentleman, Jacob, told his uncle that, Uncle, it is now time for me to go. I have been here with you. I have served you. I have worked for you. I have, I, I have done all that you told me to do. I have paid for your daughters that I married. I have worked for them. Everything that I have, there is nothing that, Uncle, you gave me to me for free. I have worked for everything. And now I want to go back to my family. Now, viewers, watch this. This is where the key that I'm about to share with you today comes from. Now, in verse 27 of Genesis chapter 30, the Bible says that when, 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 when uh, Jacob told his uncle, 
I want to live. Look at the response of his uncle. The Bible says, And Laban said unto him, I pray thee, if I have found favor in thy sight or in thy eyes, tarry, for I have learned by experience that the Lord had blessed me for thy sake. You want to go, but there is a reason why I don't want to release you. Now, the reason why I don't want you to go is because I am your uncle. Your mother is my sister. We grew up in the same house. When your mother gave birth to you, I was there. I saw you. We have seen you grow in life. But you come into my house, dwelling in my house all these years, working with me. There is one thing that I have noticed. And what I have noticed about you is that your coming into my house, into my family, has released a blessing. Viewers, listen to me this morning. This morning, God brought me here to give answers to you. Because you have been struggling for a very long time. You have been going all around, wanting to become great, wanting to increase, wanting to become the best. But I brought a key to you this morning. And the key that I have for you is the key called association. Association. This morning, your key to greatness, your key to increasing in your life, your key to increasing in your education, your key to increasing in your ministry, your key to increasing in every area that you find yourself is association. Association leads to increase. So you can even title my devotion this morning, Increase by Association. You increase in life by who you are associated with. Now, ladies and gentlemen, Laban released this key that I am sharing with you about. Laban has never mentioned this thing to his nephew. But on the day that his nephew was about to live, he told his nephew that I will not let you go. Why? Because I have learned by experience, I am older than you. I have lived more than you. But I have learned by experience that my prosperity, my greatness, my blessing, it's not because I know anything. It's not because I'm older than you. It's not because I was in ministry before you. But my blessing has come true because of my association with you. Ladies and gentlemen, the Bible says it in the Amplified Version. The Amplified Version says that Laban said, if you please, I have learned through divine inquiry that God has blessed me because of you. I have learned through divine inquiry. It was not revealed to me by man. Man did not taught me this key. But I learned this thing through divine inquiry. I assess the throne room of grace. I assess the kingdom of God. I assess the, the, the corridors of, of God. And I learned that my increase, my prosperity, my blessing came through. Because I connected myself with you. Ladies and gentlemen, this morning, who are you connected with? Because the person that you are connected with will determine how far you will go. I want to give you an example in the Bible again. When you look at Acts chapter 3, now the Bible says that when Peter and John were going to the temple at the hour of prayer, the Bible says that these guys, when they got to the gate, they saw a cripple. They saw a man who has been there. The Bible says that he has been there for more than 40 years. And his main aim is to ask for arms. When people are entering into the house of God, he asks them, please give me something. 
you know, sometimes when you are working out there, when people see you as a pastor, they think that, oh, pastor has money. So when they meet pastor, pastor, it's like when we ask you money, pastor, you are supposed to give us money because the whole world money is in your pocket. But viewers, it is not so. Sometimes the pastor is even out there and there is not even one cent in the pastor's pocket. Now, this is what happened to Peter and John. When they were entering, the Bible said that the guy asked them, please, pastors, give me money. Now, Peter said that the thing that you are asking for, the thing that you are desiring from us, we don't have that thing. But we have something that is higher than what you have been given, what you have asked us. By the way, you have been sitting here for 40 years. What you need is not money. What you need is your healing. What you need is to be able to rise up and walk. That is what you need. And Peter said that silver and gold, we don't have it. But such as we have, we give you. Ladies and gentlemen, you cannot give what you don't have. Even as I'm preaching to you this morning, what I'm giving you, it is something that is in me. It is something that I've followed for a very long time. It is something that has taken me to places. And that is why God has given me the grace to share with you. And if only you open your heart, God will bless you. Now, he said that, Peter said, we don't have silver and gold, but such as we have in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Rise up and walk. Now, this guy who has been there for 40 years rose up and he began to, the Bible says he began to leap, he jumped. And then he entered into the house of God with them. Now, it became a whole story. It became a whole story. And now the Bible says that it stirred up something. Because these people, they, don't, they are not Jesus Christ. They don't have any power. How come this guy who has been there for all these years now has the power to walk and jump and praise God? What led to this? And it became a talk of town. Now, in Acts chapter 4, the Sahindrins came to a point and they said that these guys, we got to stop them. We got to do something about them because they are going far. This miracle that they have done, it is going to turn so many people's mind towards this Jesus Christ. And so they, they call them in and, and, and they try to threaten them to stop them and all this and all that. But ladies and gentlemen, it got to a place in Acts chapter 4, verse 13. If you have your Bible with you, you can come with me to Acts chapter 4. And then the Bible says that verse 13, verse 13. When the Bible said that when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled. <laughs> because these guys were fishermen. These guys have never been to school. These guys don't know anything. They have not studied miracles. They have not studied anything. They have not been to Bible school. They don't know anything about miracles. Now, they were so surprised that how can a fisherman heal somebody like, how can a fisherman do such a miracle? Ladies and gentlemen, they were marveled. But the marvel did not end there. The Bible said that, and they took knowledge of them. They began to take knowledge of them. Hallelujah. They began to take knowledge of them. And when they took knowledge of them, what did they say? They saw that these people have been with Jesus association. These people have been with Jesus. How did Peter and John, fishermen, how were they able to do miracles? But the Bible said that the people took notice. They realized that the only connection between the healing, the miracle that have taken place, is their association with Jesus. Who are you associated with, brothers and sisters? Who are you connected with? My Christian brother, my Christian sister. My viewers out there in the world, who are you connected with? They took notice that they have been with Jesus. Laban took notice that his blessing was his connection to, to uh, Jacob. The people in us saw that this is a man. Greatness came as a result of their connection with Jesus Christ. Time will not even permit me to even take you into Genesis chapter 39 
Well, there is another story there by Joseph. Now, the Bible says that maybe it will be good for us to read, viewers, so that you'll be blessed this morning because I am leaving you this morning with a blessing, something that will bring a change in your lifetime. You are going to be somebody that you will be remembered even after you are dead and gone because of your greatness in the name of Jesus. Now, Genesis chapter 39 Verse 1, the Bible says, And Joseph was brought down to Egypt, and Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, captain of the guard, an Egyptian, bought him of the hands of the Ishmaelites, which had brought him down either. Okay, I believe we all know Joseph's story, how his brothers sold him into slavery. Now, when he got to Egypt, the Bible says that the person who bought Joseph as a slave into his house, his name was called Potiphar. Now, in verse 2 of Genesis chapter 39, the Bible said that, And the Lord was with Joseph. And the Lord was with Joseph. Association. And the Lord, Joseph had other brothers. Joseph had 11 brothers. And the Bible said that, But the Lord was with Joseph. Viewers, hear me. When you see somebody is doing well in life, I will give you an assignment. Please sit the person down and ask the person, who are you connected to? Maybe the person is connected to somebody great. Now, when Joseph was connected to the Lord, what happened to Joseph? The Bible said that, and he was a prosperous man. My God, Shabalo, Ria Sakataya. And he was a prosperous man. And he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. How can a slave be prosperous? How can somebody that you have been bought to serve your master be prosperous? But the Bible says that because the Lord was with Joseph, he was prosperous. Ladies and gentlemen, do you want to prosper? Do you want to do well in this life? You've got to connect yourself with somebody. And this morning, the person that I want you to connect yourself with is the Lord. Is the Lord. Is the Lord. You know, sometimes it looks so simple, viewers. When we say it, it looks so normal. We have heard it time and time and time and again. But, you see, why are we not prospering? Why are we not succeeding? Why are we not becoming great? Why is it not well with us? Why are we not becoming blessed in our field that we find ourselves in? The reason is that we are not believing what we see in the Bible. It didn't end there. Look at verse 3. And his master saw, remember, Laban saw that through Jacob's coming, he has prospered. Now, this Egyptian, this unbeliever, this one who does not know God, who does not flow with God, he saw, he saw, he saw. What did he see? He saw that the Lord was with him and that he, the Lord, made all that he did to prosper in his hands. The Egyptian saw that God is with Joseph. And that everything Joseph touched, it prospered. Ladies and gentlemen, hear me. This morning, God is going to prosper you. God is going to enrich your life. God is going to heal you. God is going to save you. God is going to deliver you. God is going to bring a breakthrough into your life this morning. But hear me. You got to Connect yourself with the Lord. You got to connect yourself with Jesus. I'm not talking about I'm not talking about a denomination. I'm not talking about a religion. I'm talking about Jesus. You got to connect yourself with Jesus. It is time for us to see increase. It is time for us to become great. It is time to become uncommon achievers in this life. It is time for us to do very well.
Don't die as a commoner. Die as a great person. Die as somebody who affected the world. One of the things that I always say to myself that I will not die a commoner. I will die and my name will always will be remembered. I will die and always when my, my children are see out there, they will say that that was the great preacher. Sir. That is the one, the one who came to our land. The one who went here. The one who went there to preach the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. And I believe that it is time to connect to Jesus. It is time to come to Jesus. It is not enough to go to church. It is not enough to say you belong here, you belong there. But the, my question to you this morning is that, are you connected to the Lord? Does the Lord know you? When you pick up your phone to call the Lord, when God sees your number, who he recognize you? And sometimes people call me, and when I do, because I don't know their number or whatever, I don't pick, because so many people call me from all over the world. They called me. But sometimes if I'm to pick every call, I will collapse. So sometimes I don't pick the calls. I just put my phone on silent. Now, when your phone is on silent or when God's phone is on silent and God sees that you are ringing, who is he going to pick it up or he's going to ignore? Sometimes when people are calling you, even though sometimes I'm in my prayer room and people are calling me, sometimes I have to stop and then attend to them. Why? Because I believe that they have something important. I'm giving you the opportunity this wonderful morning, viewers, to come to Jesus to connect yourself with him, to glue yourself with him, to give him a place in your life. And as you give Jesus Christ a place in your life, your life will never be the same. Don't just call yourself a Christian. Don't just call yourself a believer. Call yourself as somebody who is connected. When your name, when you pick up your phone and you call heaven and Peter picks your call, and then Peter asks you, who is this person? You say that, tell Jesus that it is so, so, and so. May Jesus pick up your call and talk to you. I thank God for your life. And I believe that this morning's message is going to challenge you. It's going to cause you to look into your life and take yourself away from people that are not going to lead you to greatness, but that you're going to be with people that are going to lead you to your blessing. I thank God for your life. I am going to give you an opportunity to give your life to Jesus Christ. I cannot close this broadcast without giving you an opportunity to give your life to Jesus Christ. Your soul is very, very important. And today, your key to becoming great is connecting yourself to Jesus. So I want you to close your eyes with me, viewers. There is somebody out there. I can see that you have just come out from your sofa and are kneeling down, ready to receive Jesus Christ. God bless you. Let us pray. Say with me, Father, I thank you this morning for sending your son Jesus into my life. Jesus, today, wash me with your precious blood and write my name in the book of life. From today, I will connect myself with you. I will serve you. I will follow you. Now say with me, Satan, from today, I have nothing to do with you. I will not follow you. You are no more my master. Jesus is my master. And I will follow him the rest of my life. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. I am a Christian. I am a believer. I am born again. Amen. And amen. And amen. Saints, God bless you so much. I love you. This is Reverend Andrew Osei from Master Seed Chapel International, formerly Lighthouse Chapel International. And I would like to join a Bible-believing church if you have given your life to Jesus right now. And I believe that one day, even if we don't meet, we will meet in heaven and we will rejoice with the Lord together. God bless you.